Hey everybody, this is the Frankie Slauson, and uh, welcome back to another great edition of the Frankie Slauson Show, and uh, it's interview time once again, as we continue to celebrate the 30th anniversary of one of the greatest uh, movie legacies that, that I can figure known to man, uh, the Ghostbusters uh, legacy, as far as uh, if, you're kind of, if you guys are wondering what I'm talking about. Uh, this, is, this year marks the 30th anniversary of the, of the uh, start of the franchise, and I have with me... Well, a guy who uh, helped play one of the most, one of the most iconic characters in that movie, the Steve Puff Marshmallow Man, and his name is Bill Bryan. How's it going, Bill? Going great. How about you? <laughs> I'm doing great. It's uh, very exciting to be able to to talk to with you. All right. Uh, I, I know that uh, earlier, like when we first met, uh, I got you confused with uh, the guy who played uh, Slimer in the first Ghost. Yeah, my friend, my friend Mark Brian Wilson, right? <laughs> but you can see how I get the how I would get it mixed up a little bit because you guys almost have similar uh, names, almost. Well, that's true. There is a Brian in both our our names. <laughs> Mine's at the end. His is in the middle. <laughs> But uh, I, I did a little research on you uh, when I got to know who you were and what uh, you know what you did uh, in, in Ghostbusters, and I I found an interview that you did uh, for the Stan. Uh, it was like the Stan. Uh, oh come on! Now I know. I, Stan Winston School of Character Arts. Yes, that yes, one. that one. Yes, and uh, I was really impressed by all the all the information that you uh, said in that interview. That's. Uh, that's a heck of a resume for somebody who uh, probably never thought he'd ever do anything in the film industry. Yeah, yeah. When I was uh, going to college, I thought I was going to be a, an impoverished silversmith in Cape Cod, Massachusetts. <laughs> and then suddenly, somebody said, "Go west." <laughs> and and uh, for those of uh, for those that don't know about you, how did it all kind of begin for you? Like, how did you get involved with? Uh, just the whole uh, special effects uh, uh, life, anyway. Well, as I mentioned in that uh, that interview on the Stan Winston School of Character Arts website, uh, which you can also go and check out, um, uh, I started in high school. Well, I mean, uh, I saw a show by uh, by Jim Henson and Frank Oz called. Muppets on Puppets. I'd always been interested in Muppets, and so I I saw how to build a Muppet on that show, and we happened to have some foam and some glue around, so I made one, and and then I kept making them for uh, quite a while after, <laughs> and expanding it beyond just Muppets into costuming, and then and when I was in college, and I did a, a and built a plant costume for a friend for a class. He was doing a a plant food commercial for for a project for one of the classes he was doing there at Syracuse. And uh, when um, the the announcer who was doing the fellow who was doing the announcing work on that commercial is a guy named Bruce Tufeld. He has a voice kind of like his dad's, Dick Tufeld, who you may have uh, heard doing the voice of the Lost in Space robot, oh. Danger Will Robinson. Remember that one? Oh, yeah. Anyway, um, so Dick was visiting his son, Bruce, and so he was in the control booth when they, they shot the commercial, and the director went in and said, so what do you think, Mr. Tufeld? Is there a place for me in Hollywood? And Dick said, no, but there's a place for the guy to make that costume. <laughs> and so uh, when I heard about that, I thought, wow, wait, maybe I do have... A possible career out there once I graduate from this place. <laughs> sure, and I'm sure it was kind of a surprise that uh, that you you would get recognition for something that you probably didn't think it was. You know, it was just kind of a, a, a fad, so to speak. But but here now you're getting recognition for somebody just saying that. You kind of like that. Yeah, I mean, you're, yeah, you're, I was I was uh, making costumes for well for Halloween. I I found that I could make a few extra bucks if I could go down to the local bar and enter the uh, Halloween costume contest and come home with maybe as much as a hundred dollars. <laughs> so um, it was from that sort of thing that uh, that my friend had uh, he'd heard about my costume making abilities, and so that was why he asked. Oh, that's that's pretty cool. Uh, and and uh, 
You know, with this year uh, being marked uh, the 30th anniversary of the of the Ghostbusters films, uh, it has to has to make you somewhat proud uh, to know that uh, the, the, the playing the role of uh, the Safe Marshmallow Man. Did you ever figure it, it was going to be so iconic 30 years later? <laughs> you know, how could you know? I mean, when I read the script, I knew it was funny. Uh, but when I called my mom to tell her uh, that I, I had a part in the movie, and she said, oh, really, what are you playing? I said, well, it's, uh, it's a giant marshmallow, man. Oh, that's nice, honey. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you, you never know. Uh, 30 years later, actually, it was, it was about two years later, I was working in North Carolina on <laughs> King Kong Lives, another classic, uh, and uh, somebody there, uh, he had gone home to see his folks, and when he got back, he he told me that uh, that uh, when he had told his his uh, friends and neighbors that he was the Marshmallow Man, that that was the one that uh, got him the most respect. Uh, <laughs> so suddenly, uh, about then, I started thinking, wait a second, uh, could, it, could it really be that? Is that important to people? Yeah, and, and, and you know it's kind of funny how over the years uh, that not only like with that movie, but even like uh, like majority of the movies from like the seventies and the eighties and even the nineties and even the early two thousands are, are remembered for such big uh, big roles that they played. But at the time, like you said, you know it was hard to tell. But it's, I'm sure it's kind of funny now that uh, it's been so long and. And people, you know that this this is going to be something that will never go away. Apparently not. That's that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my fav- my favorite part of the whole thing is that whenever somebody um, hears about it, uh, they smile. Yeah. There's always there's a guaranteed smile in it, and uh, I'd like to be able to spread that. Yeah, and that and that's, it makes people feel good when they can say, "Stay puff marshmallow man." You know. I, I was looking uh, uh, you know the fact that the State Park Marshmallow Man or, or, or the State Park Marshmallows were, were more fiction and they're not real. It'd be kind of funny if somebody actually uh, put uh, together uh, a State Park Marshmallow Company just in honor of the Ghostbusters. Yeah. Well, actually, actually, they have done so. Um, first, there was a, uh, a, a caffeinated marshmallows in a, in a puffy box. Uh, they were a little overpriced, but uh, they had the logo and, and all that. So I still have an unopened box of those that I was given by the, uh, I think it was the Ohio Ghostbusters, something like that. Sure. Anyway, um, and then um, I do know that some someone has taken to bagging uh, regular marshmallows in a state puff bag. Um, I'm not sure if they're still available, but... Uh, you put something like that out there, somebody's going to pick up and run with it. Yeah, and they're going to add it to their collection or something. But, uh, yeah, you know what I what I always thought that was so really uh, iconic about Ghostbusters is the fact that you got such a great cast. You know, you got all these guys, or just about every person who, uh, who was, you know, guy or girl who was in the movie had uh, some credit already to their to their already credits that they've uh, you know to to get the role of the, of the film. Well, sure, and sure, and it's just amazing that it turned out so well. Well, actually, you get a good cast like that, and a great script, and great concept, and throw in some excellent uh, effects, and you'd think it would be almost guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> you almost think that it'd be real. I mean, uh, I know when I was a little kid, and I'm sure this is how it is for every little kid, you know, when they start watching television or start watching movies, they pretty much think that everything that they see on TV is real. And I remember so much, you know, that's why I never got into horror, because I always thought, who wants to see somebody get killed on TV? You know, because I thought it was real. I didn't know the evolution of, of what it was like to make a movie until I finally figured it out. And uh, you actually take part in the uh, in uh, the dual effects for other films as well, other than just uh, no, sure. Ghostbusters. Sure, I build build a lot of uh, effects for various shows. Sometimes I get to perform them, and sometimes uh, other people do. Oh, uh, well, that's, that's kind of neat. Uh, uh, special effects have always been uh, 
been interesting to me. And, and but and not just the com- uh, the computer animated effects. I I'm talking like the stuff that you do, like making monsters and creatures and stuff like that. I mean that that has to be to to have that be your job has to be probably the most exciting thing for you. It's a great job. It's always something new, and uh, and you know as long as I can keep going to work and uh, doing what I love, and I guess I never have to. Uh, what is it they say? If you do what you love for a job, you never have to work a day in your life. Something like that. Yeah. Something well, like that. the truth is, there's actually work involved, but uh, yeah, of <laughs> but course. it's good stuff. <laughs> and work isn't a dirty work. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's it's a wor- it's one of the worst swear words you could ever say. Work. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, have there been any uh, projects you've been up to lately? Well, actually, I just. Um, I'm in the process of putting together a web series about fabricating effects. And uh, and conveniently, I was just asked to build a Slimer for an art show. And so I, you know, was able to, uh, to threw Slimer together really quick um, and uh, and videotaped it, you know, various ways with the, the GoPro on my head and the 7D uh, sitting on the, on the tripod uh, staring me in the face. And anyway, it's... Uh, it should be an interesting little uh, uh, piece once we get it edited together, and I think it'll spur the interest of the uh, the producers, and we'll get that going. Oh, sure. So, with the evolution of special effects, uh, what what in, in your own words, what do you think uh, uh, of the difference be, uh, of nowadays compared to back in the old days? You know, even back prior to even before you started working on this stuff. Uh, how how do you think the uh, how do you think it has evolved uh, in your own words? Well, let's see. The advent of the uh, uh, computer generated effects has made it possible to do effects that uh, uh, couldn't have been done in the past. Um, but there there is a bit of a backlash to that as well, I and mean, people people can almost always tell whether it's, um, you know, pixels on a screen or uh, or real rubber or something. Um, and uh, the best effects, of course, are the combinations where, um, where the, uh, the, the real physical object is there to be uh, interacted with. And then in those instances where... Uh, the the real object fails, uh, then the computer generated image can uh, can be popped in there to to help you out. But uh, yeah, in the old days, you know, you had uh, had Lon Chaney painting stuff on his face and sticking things in his cheeks and uh, and putting on weird teeth and things. Um, and then we still have some of that going on. Um, yeah. And I, somehow, well, I'd like to believe that they'll never get a, entirely away from that. Yeah, and and, and I, I hope I hope you're right about that because you know I think the the evolution of making the you know any type of effect uh, by 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 just your own hands I think is is more would make more of a, of a brilliant masterpiece than just you going on a computer and I, I'm sure there is a lot of technical aspects to, to obviously both type of, of jobs but it's like making something with your hands is the way God intended it to be you know so to speak <laughs> <laughs> well I'm not gonna comment on what God intended it's, uh, he, he didn't he didn't tell me I just Try to do what feels right. So, other than, um, other than working with, like, but, oh, go, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> uh, I was going to ask, other than working with, like, uh, Ivan Reitman, uh, any other uh, famous uh, directors or people that you've worked with? Well, let's see. Uh, I worked on the first Child's Play, it's some puppeteering on okay. Chucky. So, worked with Tom Holland on that one. Um,. Worked on Captain EO for uh, Disney, uh, for Disneyland with uh, Michael Jackson and uh, produced by George Lucas, but Francis Ford Coppola directed that one. Wow. Um, let's see, uh, Barry Sonnenfeld. Um, we were doing some commercials for Duracell batteries. Oh. Um, I was I was making their 
uh, there was a, a family of sort of robot-like characters called the Putterns, and they had a battery on their back. And if they had the wrong kind of battery, of course, they failed. Anyway, I was making their clothing out of out of foam and uh, coating it. And uh, Barry Sonnenfeld was shooting that first c- commercial that we did that way, and he was talking to us at the time about the show that was coming up called Men in Black. Oh, yeah. uh, that he was going to do. Uh, I was working with Steve Johnson at the time, and uh, and Barry has a tendency to sort of gloat when he tells people about things. So uh, you get a little bit of the feeling he's saying, "And you're not going to get the job," <laughs> <laughs> because he was working with Rick Baker on that. But an amusing thing happened there is that uh, uh, Rick. I'm told anyway that Rick said, uh, "Hey, if it's going to be a." a uh, movie about aliens, shouldn't there be a scene where there's a bunch of aliens? And the producers said, oh, yeah, I guess you're right. Why don't you go ahead and uh, uh, get busy on that? And Rick said, well, I don't have time for that. I'm busy working on all these other effects for the movie. So um, they kind of did a, a call out to all the effects shops in town. It became sort of like the, the world's coolest uh, Halloween costume contest in the way, um, different effects shops all showing up with their their version, um, you know, their their alien, one or two aliens. And uh, I got to build the slug guy. That's what we called him originally, although nowadays maybe you call him grouchy because of that shot. Uh, maybe you remember the, the shot in the show where uh, Will Smith has just accepted the job and Tommy Lee Jones is telling him, uh, as of this moment, your skills mean... Uh, nothing. Zilch, he used a different word. But anyway, uh, and then immediately after that, the elevator doors open and we see the sort of like airport concourse where there's, uh, they walk down the, the customs line. Uh-huh. And at the bot, and at the end of the line, uh, this big transparent creature leans in and Will almost touches him and Tommy says, you don't want to touch, or don't want to get too close to him, he's grouchy. <laughs> so that was a costume creature that I had, had built out of plastic bags. And if you take a look at it, you can see that it's transparent. And uh, and they actually, at the time, uh, Rick Baker had told Steve Johnson, well, I would like this creature to be you know, transparent, but that would probably be prohibitively heavy. And <laughs> Steve said, I don't think that's going to be a problem because it's mostly air with a uh, thin... A layer of plastic bag, you yeah, know, polyethylene, sure, uh, surrounding it. Wow, yeah, I, I, I definitely remember uh, Men in Black, and I also remember the Child's Play movie. I actually had a chance to do an interview a couple of years back with uh, Alex Vincent, who uh, recently uh, made an appearance in the. Uh, mm-hmm. Who he made an appearance in the uh, the last uh, Chucky movie that just came out here not too long ago. Oh, the, the, the curse. Yeah. yeah, I did. I give okay. that. A, did I give that I away to you? <laughs> No, no, I did a little bit of uh, construction work on that one, too, uh, you know, just devising oh. ways to simplify the puppet. Oh, okay. Uh, working for Altarian. I forget who directed that one but, this time. But over- I met Alex. Alex uh, I had, of course, met him on set on the first one, but then I was doing an autograph signing um, in, I don't know, a couple of years ago, and Alex was there. We got to talk a little bit. Yeah, he's definitely yeah. definitely an interesting kid. Uh, that's for sure. Actually, he's all, he's a year older than I am. So <laughs> <laughs> he's thirty one. I'm thirty. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, one one last question before I let you go. On, and, and first of all, I just want to say again, uh, it, you know, thanks for letting me do this interview with you. I think it's uh, it's very cool that uh, that you're that people like you who are so busy but yet have time to to give back to the fans and give back to the people that appreciate your work. Uh, it really means uh, really means a lot to me to to have you on the show. Well, it's nice to feel wanted, of course. Other than the uh, posters in the post office, <laughs> um, no, it's uh, <laughs> it's a pleasure to to help out and uh, and spread the word. Uh, one last question that I have for you, and it's about the Stan Winston uh, school that you're you're working in. Uh, how how is that experience? Because that guy is definitely known for a lot of uh, great effects work as well. Yeah, well, actually, I worked with um, worked at Stan's before he died um, back in uh, let's see, oh one, I think it was. I was working on Jurassic Three and AI, 
and uh, yeah, it was it was uh, nice working there. It's a it was a big shop, a lot of people, and uh, uh, yeah. One day, Stan came up behind me while I was working on uh, on the wings for the Tyrannodons. And uh, he kind of leaned in close. He said, I won't say this in front of anybody else, but we consider you to be a great find here. You're taking us places we've never been before. Uh, but don't expect me to me to tell anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I'd have to spread the word myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. That's, that's quite the compliment that he could give you because it's like, you know, coming from, I think any compliment from a guy like that uh, should be taken in stride. You know, because a legend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was it was nice to hear. Yeah. Well, uh, this has been William Br- uh, interview with uh, Bill Bryan, and uh, once again, I just want to say thank you. Any last words to uh, any any fans out there that you may have uh, that know your work? Well, uh, let's see. Um, I guess the one thing I can say to you all is, stay puffed. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Well, thanks again for being a part of the Frankie Slauson Show, and uh, I appreciate it uh, more than you more than you know. All right, well, thank you. All right, have a good one, Brian. You. And that was, I call him Brian, <laughs> and that was Bill Bryan. Uh, as you know, he's the guy who played the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man in Ghostbusters, the first one. And uh, as you also know, he's also known for some uh, effects work. See, I like talking to people like this because, not just because of the fact that he played a, an iconic character, but it also, it, you know, that he stayed in the, in the love of doing the effects and stuff of, of certain movies that we all grew up with. And uh, I like talking to people like this because, uh, it's, you know, everybody, a lot of people are always concerned about the big name stars, you know, that, you know, that they're the ones that deserve all the recognition because they're, you know, that's why... You know, the awards and everything like that. But I, I believe that it's people that do, like, you know, effects and, and the people behind the scenes that deserve more of the credit than, than meets the eye. Uh, well, everybody that partakes in a film or television series or whatever deserves, you know, uh, many props. But it's just nice when uh, you can talk to somebody who has had experience and, and things that you would probably know. And the name probably is not familiar either, but... No, everybody remembers the State Park Marcelo, man, if anything. And this is just a cool way to celebrate 30 years of the, of, of the Ghostbusters. Uh, a, a couple months ago, I did an interview with uh, uh, the person, the lady that played Slimer in Ghostbusters 2, uh, Robin Shelby. Uh, you should go check out that interview on my YouTube.com slash Frankie Slauson Show page. And last summer, I did an interview with the guy who created the Ghostbuster logo, the very famous Ghostbuster logo, as well as uh, worked with National Lampoon, Mr. Michael C. Gross. And uh, that also was uh, very fun to do. So uh, it's just uh, it's just a good way to celebrate. Hopefully we can get some more interviews with some other people that were uh, that had uh, partake in the movie. Uh, hopefully this won't be the last one, but uh, you never know. And uh, once again, uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in to this interview. Uh, the old Rev and I will be back. Uh, which, after this quick commercial break or song, whichever gets played first. And uh, we'll be right back with some more from the Frankie Slauson Show right here on KTAC with Frankie and the old Reb rocking it to you. <laughs> 